Hey everybody, welcome back to Connerty Meadows Farm. I don't know about you guys, but it sure felt like a really long winter. For those of you that don't know, I am in Ontario, Canada. My name is Ricky. I always say with Hascaps that it is a rush between them and daffodils as to who is going to open first. Sometimes the daffodils open first, sometimes the Hascaps open first. You just don't know if from year to year. But they are the sort of first fruit that is going to flower and be available for the bees. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why we like them. But um, they will even flower out long before the strawberries. Now my strawberries are just starting to put some green out. And so they are way ahead of where the strawberries are. Hascaps are a very important first fruit um, bloom for the bees. And once again, I have been in the garden, I don't know, like five minutes. Garden Kitty shows up. This is Ash. And he has a thing of always making sure if I'm in the garden, he's got to be with me. This is a one-year-old Hascap plant. And as you can see, there is no buds on it, which is completely normal. They usually don't flower out until year two or year three. Oh, actually, ha, this guy is an overachiever. It's got a couple little buds there. It won't be much, but it's got some. Whereas if we just pan over here to this one, this is a three year old bush and it is loaded with buds. Now they're just starting to open up this one is a different variety and it is already way open. It just depends on the variety as to when they open. So different um, varieties of Hascaps will open at different times. And that is why when you're pairing Hascaps with a pollinator male and female. Before I get corrected on this, I do want you guys to know that I know for Hascaps, that male and female is not actually what they're called. They're a pollinator and a pollinate or however you want to refer to it. For ease of learning, I am going to refer to Hascaps as male and female because you actually will find within some stores that they call them a Mr. and a Mrs. And it just um, makes it easier for some people to understand. You need to make sure that you're picking ones that are open at the same time or they won't pollinate. So you can look down there and you can see all of those ones have buds. And then if I pan you down here, all of these guys here have buds. So these guys are all opening at the same time and they are open. Look at this one, just covered. <sighs> they are open before the variety on the other side. You can see all the bushes. Now this one looks a little sad here. I was a little bit worried about it. I am gonna cut this dead piece back, but you can see it's got new growth coming in. So um, me getting rid of this dead stalk and this dead stalk are not gonna hurt it. I was giving it a little bit more time, but this is very dead. And that's okay because this half of the bush is good and it's pushing off new shoots. And here we have another variety and they are just starting to open. This one is open. That one's open. This is the one I have to replace. So um, I know for sure this one was berry blue that I had to replace. And this one actually has a tag on it. So we might be able to see what this one was. Tundra. So Tundra and Berry Blue go together and they are not fully all the way open yet. So Tundra and Berry Blue, Tundra, Berry Blue, Tundra. And then I can't remember offhand what those ones are. I'll look them up. Um, but again, I've just done male, female, male, female pollinator. Really, you only need one male to three or four females. But just to give you an idea, so they are coming in bloom right now. And this is where my apple trees are at. 
they are only just starting to break bud. So that's how early these guys come in. That would make a number of the ones over here, Aurora and Borealis, but I'll have to double check. Just at our local Canadian Tire. Um, so I needed the berry blue to replace the one that I had. And right next to it is the Borealis. Now berry blue can go with Borealis or Aurora. So either one, they're early. So either one of those would be a great fit for it. But the nice thing about hascaps, unlike a lot of plants that require a male and a female, is that both the male and the female produce fruit. Generally speaking, for like something like kiwi, for example, the male is just there to pollinate the female and the male does not produce any fruit. It's kind of like the same thing on a squash plant or a pumpkin plant. There are two flowers. There's the male flower and the female flower and the male flower is only there to pollinate the female flower and doesn't give you any fruit. Where hascaps, both male and female will give you fruit. Now for the hascaps, the other thing you need to know is that there are many different varieties and certain varieties pair better with um, varieties than others. There are early blooming varieties and later blooming varieties. And if you get two different varieties and one's early blooming and one's late blooming, they're not gonna be able to cross pollinate. So it's very important to look and see which ones go together. For example, there is a variety called Aurora and another variety called Borealis. And the two of those ones team up together. There is a kind called Berry Blue and a kind called tundra and the two of those ones go together. So today I am putting a berry blue in because that's the kind that I lost. So all of the little shrubs that you can see in the line here are all hascap shrubs all the way around through the orchard and then here down this line as well. They're all hascap shrubs. Garden kitty. That's Sylvester coming to help. I think hascaps taste like a mix of a blueberry and a raspberry squished together. Now, if you've never he seen a hascap, um, I have one here to plant and um, it has a picture on it. So I can show you the picture. As of right now, we don't, oh my, look at this. We have a friend. You guys see that big bee? Yay, it's pollinating my plants, which is exactly what we want. Anyway, so I have a picture here to show you um, what a blueberry looks like compared to a hascap. And a hascap is basically, it looks like a blueberry that someone has taken and like stretched it like an elastic. This one I got at our local Canadian Tire. This was the kind that I needed. And you can see here, this is what it looks like, like an elongated kind of blueberry. I do have a blueberry bush I'm planting today as well. And you can see, so these guys are round and blue. These guys are elongated and blue. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with hascaps is people think as soon as they're blue, they're ready to eat and then they'll have them and they think they're disgusting and sour and gross. But hascaps are not ready to eat until the inside has changed color. So the inside of them, once they start to go blue, will be white. And it's not until the inside of them goes blue that they're ready. The other thing that you can do to test if a hascap is ready or not. So if they're all blue and you think they're ready, give the bush a shake. If they fall off, they're ripe. If they do not fall off when you shake the bush, they are not ready. That is the easiest test to see if they're ready and the best test to see if they're ready. If you have to physically pick them off, they're not ready to be eaten and they're going to be sour and not taste very good. You can see here, so I have a weed barrier down and then I have the house cap in and I have wool around them. Now, why do I have the wool? 
So what good does the wool do underneath these plants? Well, first off, as you can see, I have fabric barrier down. And I have fabric barrier down because originally, at one point, this was a hay field. And we've converted it into our orchard. And these poor plants would have been taken over with this grass if I hadn't put the fabric barrier down. It also lets me know that I can jut the fence as close to the fabric barrier as possible. But what was happening was, because the has caps have such shallow roots, they were actually scorching. And last year, we had a little bit of a uh, drought for the season. And I had seen this idea of using wool um, from another homesteader. So I thought I'd give it a go. So I put the wool down and instantly noticed a difference. Pretty near every single plant thrived after that. Not only did they all start setting new leaves, but they also started sending off new shoots from the ground. So what does the wool do? Well, it keeps them more moist. It keeps their roots cooler and it holds the moisture and slowly releases it. So for example, if we are in a drought and I water, the wool soaks up a lot of the water. But then what it does do is slowly over time, it will release the water from the bottom part, which then means that the roots are staying cooler and more damp and retaining more water so they become healthier. The other thing that it does is it does help suppress some weeds. So now um, I have started slowly utilizing the wool underneath all of our plants from our apple trees to our plum trees to our um, pear trees to the has caps and the blueberries and I will be trying it in the garden on my tomatoes and peppers this year as well. This wool is from our sheep when we shear them and shearing doesn't hurt sheep it's just like getting a haircut they're just getting their hair cut off um, and because we only have a handful of sheep we can't take it anywhere and do anything with it so this is a really great way for me to use up all of my extra wool here in Canada where we get really cold so the wool will actually help keep the roots a little bit warmer in the winter time a little bit cooler in the summertime and maintain some moisture so if we're in a drought or whatever and I'm having to water these this will help maintain the moisture in them much better I absolutely encourage you if you have sheep and you're shearing them and maybe you're shearing them yourself and you're not selling the wool do yourself a favor and start using it under your plants. You'll be so surprised at how good of a job it does, especially the belly wool where there should be like feces and stuff that eventually soaks down into the ground without being too concentrated all at the same time. Hascaps actually don't mind a little bit of wet feet. They actually thrive in it okay. They are not near as picky as blueberries that need you to change the acidity in your soil and all of that stuff. Hascaps are very good at kind of growing wherever you plant them. Apparently I'm not giving him enough uh, attention. On average, hascaps can be around two meters wide by two meters tall. So make sure when you're planting them, you give them the full space. I think I've planted them three to four feet apart just because that's the space that I had and I was able to do that all the way along. I have this berry blue. Let's go ahead and get it planted. For a full Hascap planting tutorial, click the link at the top of the screen or click the link in the description box below and I go through step by step the entire planting process. I do want to point out a quick difference. This is the Hascap that we just put in the ground. Do you notice the difference in the leaves? So look how green and small and young they are. And this is a different cultivar, but this is the same one, berry blue. So this house cap is about three years old and you can see the difference in the leaves. Now you can see here, there's some new shoots, but even still, these ones are a lot sturdier from being in the ground and having the roots able to spread compared to the one down there. And you can even see from here, the difference in the foliage. Another uh, kitty that belongs in the garden with me. We absolutely love hascaps because they are so easy to grow. And especially in a cold climate here, like 
Ontario, Canada. They're a perfect thing for you to be able to grow, to produce your own food, and in a relatively short period of time. These guys will produce food in two to three years from planting, so you really do not need to wait a whole lot of time. If you're buying um, like I just did from a pot in the nursery, that one will produce fruit next year. I have some in this garden that I planted last year from uh, bare root. So they were very small, they were bare root, not very large, and they are already putting off some flowers. They will not give us a whole lot of fruit this year, but next year they will be laden. Many of these ones that you see back here are two and three year old plants. They are not very tall yet, but they are piles of flowers in them, which means that we should have a really great hascap crop this year. So this hascap plant, you can see, has some flowers on it. But behind the flower here, do you see the little berries starting to come in? So they are already starting, which is great. That means those ones got pollinated. This one back here, you see? So the berry behind the flowers. So this one is starting to get some fruit on it. We are four days later from the last video and look at the size difference in these guys compared to some of these other guys. I'm loving this. We are gonna get to eat some of these guys this year. All right guys, let's talk about what's going on with the Hascats. We are the fir first week of June now in Ontario, Canada and I'll show you what's going on. Here is one of our Hascat trees. As you can see, the Hascats are starting to turn blue. Now, with if this was a blueberry, you would say, okay, great, let's eat this. But this is a Hascap. And Hascaps are not ready when they turn blue. Well, what do you mean by that? They're blue, they should be ripe. They're not actually ripe. How can you tell if a Hascap's ripe? If a Hascap's right, when I shake this bush, it would fall on the ground. These guys aren't ripe yet. It takes me a significant amount of effort to pick that Hascap. Now, let's see, this is unripe, and this is gonna be very sour, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you anyway. So, not yet. Soon though, at this stage of the game, being unripe, to me, as growing up, we used to eat a lot of unripe apples. Like, I'm talking about like this big on the trees. And they were very tart and they were very sour. And I loved them. And right now, the way these hascaps taste is exactly like what those very small apples tasted like. Very, very sour. I like it. Not everybody does. And this is not its full flavor. So for now, you gotta leave it alone. Now have a look at this bush. We have some that are blue, some that are green, and some that are purple. So there's a few different stages right there of the half scap, but none of them are ripe. Here's another variety. Again, same thing. You're gonna think these purpley ones here are ripe. If they were ripe, when I touched them, or shook this branch, they would come off. They are not ready yet. Hold on, wait just a little while longer. Now you can see definitely different varieties here. So we have the male and the female, and the male and the female and the male. Now, the nice thing about the males is that they still produce fruit. That's one thing I really like about Hascaps. But we're still running into this. You think this is ripe, but it's not. Again, if I shook this, it would come off if it was ripe. So even though, ah, dear me. Even though that looks ripe, it's not. not ripe. I think this year this is my fullest bush. So here's the other thing with hascaps. 
is until you get really up close to it, it's really hard to see the fruit. You can actually see the fruit better from the side. Doesn't it look lovely? Not yet though, guys. I have been checking on the Haas caps pretty near every day now for the last little while. And um, they're not 100% ready yet. So normally for Haas caps to know they're ready, give the uh, bush a shake. If they fall, they're ready. Unfortunately, I also don't have any cover over my Haas caps to keep the birds out. And I've noticed a significant amount of blue bird poop around. And that can only mean one thing. That means they're eating my house caps. So today, I'm gonna pick house caps. Now normally, here in Ontario, Canada, where we are, house caps are ready between mid to end of June. So we're a little bit early, but if I want to have any of them, I need to pick them now. Now you can still see on this particular house cap, there's still some green ones, but see, look here, this blue one down here, it's been eaten. So the birds are uh, getting in and eating my hascaps. So I am gonna go ahead and harvest any that feel like they're ready. So I'm gonna pick, and if they don't have a massive amount of trouble coming off, then they're ready enough. I don't mind tart hascaps, so that's okay. Now this one here, it's not coming loose, so it's not close to ready yet. So I'm just gonna go and kind of feel them one at a time. If they kind of fall into my hand, I'm gonna pick them. Cause otherwise, I'm not gonna get any. These birds are uh, helping themselves to my food. And house caps can be a bit tricky. Like it doesn't really look like there's a lot of fruit from above, but you gotta lift, and then underneath is all this beautiful fruit. This one's been pecked by the birds. Still taking it though. So just lift and look, see? There's even more hiding under here still. Tricky, tricky. That's what also makes it a little bit harder for the birds to find. This particular bush that I'm picking off of right now and the next one were ones I put in bare root last year. So there's not a significant amount of fruit on them, but still enough that I need to come rescue it. So you can see within a very short period of time, these guys can put off a lot of food. This hascap was a bare root plant last year. And look at it, it's absolutely thriving in here. And look at the size of this one. Now I didn't pick this one because it's not ready, which means I might lose it to the birds, like these ones here, but that's okay. They can have a few. They just weren't ready for me to pick anyway. Look at this. Oh, and you can tell the ripe, ripe, ripe ones are the ones the birds are going after. They pecked it on me. Oh well, it is what it is. Beautiful, eh? Let me show you what the inside looks like. Mm. Nice and juicy. So it's still a little bit tart. Not quite 100% ready yet, but at this point, if I don't pick the ones that are almost ready or completely ready, I'm gonna lose all of them because the birds have found out where the treats are. Not that I blame them any, they are delicious. Now, they're not sour like the last time when I said, remember they kind of tasted more like a, a sour apple. They're past that point now. And they're actually, they might be a bit uh, tart, might be the right word, but they're no longer sour. Like, absolutely delicious. Mm -mm -mm. So, for those of you that never have had them before, their texture and the skin has a uh, very, very much like blueberry. Very uh, soft skin and um, soft texture. So think 
texture and feel exactly like a blueberry that's elongated but flavor for me personally and this is just what i think people will tell you other things i think that they taste like a blueberry and a raspberry kind of squished together like if you were to take a blueberry and a raspberry and eat them together um that's what the flavor's like but again the texture is that of a blueberry oh <laughs> Oh, buddy, never, ever very far away. Mm. Garden kitty. All right, I gotta get picking. And see this one? I didn't even hardly leave any of it behind, just a little bit of skin. So here, down under here, you can see this one still has green on the bottom. So I'm not actually gonna pick that. I might lose it, but I'm not gonna pick it because it'll be way too sour anyway. You gonna patrol the garden for me, buddy? Good job. You patrol the garden. You get them. Oh, and look at this. So he actually walked past and um, these guys all fell off. So these guys are actually ripe. When your has caps fall off on touching or when you shake the branch, they're ripe. So those ones are ready. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this. So this is like the regular bird poop. And this one here, <laughs> sorry, it has a little bit of a purple tinge to it. So they're in here just mowing down on my berries. And I'm having a hard time getting any work done. <laughs> I've been keeping my eye on this tree for a while. It was the most heavily um, laden tree. And uh, it's definitely ready. And the birds have definitely been enjoying the snacks. There's so many partially eaten berries on this tree. So definitely got to get to her. All right, let's uh, grab one of these ones that fell on the ground. Now this one, because it fell on the ground, tells me that it's more than ripe and ready to eat. Look how nice that is. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. I had someone say that they look like June bugs. I promise they don't taste like June bugs. Mm. So juicy. And now you know why I've been wearing my fly mask. That is delicious. Not even tart anymore. Absolutely lovely. All right, back to picking. Now this one. It really doesn't look like there's much on it. You can see a little bit of fruit here and there. But lift it up and then look. See, from here, nothing. From here, fruit galore. Ooh, one fell on the ground. That one's gonna be the best tasting one. Normally, you'd want these to just basically fall off in your hand. <clears throat> but again, I'm picking a bit early because if I don't, the birds are gonna get them all on me. Until I can get some sort of netting over them, I'm just gonna have to pick them early this year. Maybe next year. still a lot of uh, green fruit on this so you know in another couple weeks I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some more fruit but for now I've picked everything that's ready you can see here oh and you see I pick and I still managed to miss some so look at that now they aren't usually always this small but, uh, hey, Leto. These ones are a little bit smaller. These bushes gave bigger berries. I think um, these ones were tundra. 
and these ones were berry blue. And the berry blue gave very tiny, very tiny berries comparatively. Here, oh, there's one. So, let's see if we can find one in here. There, just to show you size-wise comparison. So that one closest to my ring is Tundra, and this one that's not ripe yet is Berry Blue. I have my lovely pail here with has caps in it and some leaves I have to pick through and clean it up. Freya says hello. If you've heard of faciated blossoms um, and cat facing and tomatoes, this is the same similar idea. It's just happened in a has cap. So there was actually three blossoms here that uh, kind of fused together to cause this really strange looking has cap. Don't worry, it still tasted delicious. And you can see here, this is what I managed to pick and I've gone through and taken out all the leaves and this was my little snack. Mm, now that one was delicious. Has cap ground berries means that they're ripe. When they fall on the ground like that, it means that they're ripe. And they really are the best tasting when they do that. Mm, that was the best one I've had today. It's really hard not to snuggle him. I'm not gonna lie. He's so fun. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us on the farm. And we will see you guys next time. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer them. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.